everyone and welcome to Jack and Cat Adventures. Today we're going to be making brioche hot cross buns. Now this is really towards the Easter um, dinner uh, dessert type thing. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the whole thing step by step because I've been getting um, replies of people want me to start measuring in front of them and showing them exactly how it's done. So I'll do a couple of those over the next couple of weeks and um, then go back to my regular just measuring ahead of time. But we'll see how this works. I just don't want my videos to be too, too long. So let's get started. So in a bowl, you're going to need a half cup of dried cranberries and a half cup of raisins. Now I am only using cranberries, don't like raisins. You're also going to um, fill the bowl with boiling water and then you're going to put your craisins and raisins in, stir it, and let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. We're, what we're doing is we're plumping them so they're not dry. I am using orange juice just for a little added flavor. My orange juice is hot. I'm going to add my cranberries. So that would be a cup of cranberries for me because I don't like raisins. And it also calls for yellow raisins, which I don't even have at home. And now, I am out of orange juice, which I didn't realize. So um, what I'm going to do is after these plump, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to keep my orange juice for my frosting. The frosting calls for milk, but I like to use frosting, so our, our orange juice for my frosting. Just gives it a little more flavor. So I'm just going to pour those in. I'm going to stir them. And now I'm just going to set these to the side so I don't dump them. And just let them sit for 15 to 20 minutes. Let me pick up the ones I dropped before I step all over them. Okay, now let's get started on our dough. In your mixer bowl, you're going to need, let me read, 3 quarters cup of milk. We're going to warm to 110 degrees, okay? Whole milk is the best, but if you have 2%, that's fine. quarters cup of milk. I'm just going to pour this into a cup and heat it in the microwave. Let me get a cup. Okay. There's your thermometer. You couldn't have reached it. Okay. I'm just going to heat this up. Now you don't want it too hot because it'll kill your yeast. So let's just start at a minute and see how that goes. In the meantime, we're going to start getting our dough together. So, um, Let's see. I haven't made these in forever, guys, so please forgive me on reading the recipes. I only make them like once a year. So, okay, so we're going to add the flour. So we need three and a half cups of flour. So when you're going to do your flour, just kind of pull it up. And this makes it a little bit airier. So you're not, um, you don't want to pound it in. You want it light, okay? So here's one. So don't pack it in like brown sugar? Right, no, don't pack. And just take a back of a, I call it a butter knife, and just kind of hit it down lightly, and then just go across the top, and that's one. Nice and level. Yeah, it must be nice and level, and all the flour inside the, the measuring cup. Two. check my milk. I'm going to check the t temperature on that. I think it might be a little too warm actually guys. So I'm going to let it sit. I can feel it through the... Yeah, I'm going to let this sit and cool down just a little bit because it will kill my yeast. It's very hot. Okay, Jackie, you keep an eye on that until it gets to 117, one, one I think. 110, you said. Did I say 110? Yep. Yeah. 110 degrees. Sorry, 110 degrees, guys. Okay, so now I have my flour in here. I want it exactly 110 because 
I'm going to add my sugar and my um, yeast, and I'm going to let my yeast grow, okay? So let me grab another spoon for the yeast. Okay, now, we're done with the flour for now, so let's move that. Give you a little working room. A little there. work room. Now, in the flour, we are going to add... We're going to make a well in the center. So just kind of move your flour to the sides and make a kind of a deep well, okay? Now everything in this recipe has to be room temperature. Nothing can be cold. If you put cold in with your warm yeast, it will kill it. It won't grow. Everything must be the right temperature for bread. Bread's very tricky. So really do temperatures and measurements pretty spot on for baking, okay? So now we're going to add um, the yeast mixture, eggs, vanilla, and salt. So let's do our eggs. We need three eggs, and I have them in a bowl. They're room temperature. Um, I'm going to crack them into this bowl just to make sure I don't get any shells or if the eggs are bad. All right, so we're just going to pour our eggs in that well. There's a lot of steps to this recipe, but it's very easy. It's very easy. I think it's one of the easiest bread recipes I have. Anyone can do it. Just follow the directions to a T, that's all. All I know is they're delicious. Yeah, they are very delicious. Okay, so put that aside, wash my hands. Let's do our pinch of salt right here. Pinch, teaspoon of vanilla, actually I don't need this milk anymore, just put that back in the fridge. Alright, I said one teaspoon of vanilla. any spices you would like. You could add cinnamon, nutmeg, whatever. I'm not adding any spices today only because the brioche bread is so buttery and light that sometimes that um, extra like cinnamon and stuff kind of takes away from that really nice mouth feel. So I'm not using any today, okay? So check my um, my well, milk. Here, here okay. All right. I'm just waiting for my yeast to get done so we'll come back when that's done. Once your milk hits the right temperature, you're going to add one and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast and one tablespoon of sugar. Now we're going to stir this and we're going to let it set until it foams. All right, now I'm going to pour in my half cup of um, sugar into the hole and now my um, yeast has um, gotten foamy. Come show them, Jackie. So you want it foamy like that, okay? Now we're going to just add this into our well in the middle. Make sure you get everything out. And we're going to start this on low until it starts to combine all of the liquids into the flour with your dough hook. All right, now my ingredients are in the middle are all together. I have a lot of flour on the outside of the bowl, so I'm going to turn it on high, and we're going to get that incorporated. Now, you may need to, I'm going to turn it on just a little bit, my flour's flying out. You may need to scrape down the sides, but we'll wait and see. Now, once all your flour is mixed in, we're going to start adding three quarters of a cup of softened butter. Okay, so I'm just going to cut them in half and put them in. Don't add the paper. I'm not. I think the paper was on that one. I've got to get it off. A little extra fiber, but what the heck, you know. No, there's no paper. Okay. It was good. All right. I heard the tear. I didn't know if you got it all. I know. Kind of put it around the bowl. This is what makes 
than brioche. The butter makes it light and airy. All right, now we're going to mix this in. All right, so you're going to mix this on high speed. And like I said, you're probably going to have to scrape down your sides and bottom and make sure all that butter gets in there. And then continue to stir this on high until the butter is all incorporated, okay? butter's mixed in, you want to need this for at least 10 minutes. Now, the dough's going to be sticky, give it time. Do the 10 minutes, we'll check and see if it's sticky, and if it is, we can add up to a quarter cup of flour. It depends on how watery your butter is, how big your eggs are. There's a lot of components that might make it that you need to add a little bit more flour, and that's normal with bread. So we're going to let this knead for 10 minutes. All right, so mine has been um, kneading for 10 minutes, and it's still not in the shape that I want it. It needs to come together, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of flour at a time, like I said, up to a quarter cup, and we're gonna knead that in. Now we're gonna drain our cranberries. I've decided not to use this orange juice. I'm gonna get fresh orange juice only because the cranberries made it look really brown and that color will look brown on your on your buns. So I'm just gonna drain them, no biggie. Make sure all of the water or orange juice is out of it. I'm just kind of squeezing it a little bit because you don't want to add any more liquid to that. That dough is perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to add these to my dough. And I'm going to just mix them until they're mixed in good. Alright, once you add your cranberries, either pour this out onto your counter and you're going to want to make a nice ball. I did mine in my bowl. It was really easy. I just did it with my, my spatula. And now you're going to pour it into a greased bowl. Make sure you get all your dough. I'll put it into a bit better ball in the bowl. Looks perfect. Okay, so now this is what it looks like. It does not stick to my hands. Just add enough flour so that it doesn't stick to your hands. It's going to be greasy because you added all that butter. Now we're going to put a wet um, cotton cloth. Now you want it hot. You're going to set it over the top of your bread and you're going to let your bread set somewhere where it does it out of a draft for an hour or until it doubles in size. If you don't have a, um, a cotton cloth, use um, saran wrap, plastic wrap, but spray the, the um, top of your bread or put a little bit of oil on top of your bread so it doesn't stick, okay? All right, so after it doubles in size, this is what mine looks like. I'm going to pour it out onto my countertop. And I am going to put this into a log. Just roll it into a log. It's not sticky. It works great. Just make sure the log is even all the way around. Alright, once we get it into our log, we're going to cut it into four pieces even, okay? So let's see. What about here, I think? Here. And here. Then we're going to cut each of these four pieces into three pieces, even pieces if we can. Okay, then you're going to roll them into a ball. into a really nice ball. This dough is wonderful to work with. And you're going to place them in a deep pan that is sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. Okay. And then we're going to let them proof again with a wet 
damp cloth on top for another hour. All right, so here's our rolls. What I did was I kept folding under and turning and folding under to make sure the tops are nice and smooth and look like rolls. Now I have my wet cloth, which makes sure you wring it out really dry, really good. You don't want it wet, wet. And I'm just going to put this over these and they're going to proof for another hour. All right, once your um, buns have proofed for an hour, you're going to use an egg wash. It's an egg with just a little bit of water in it and um, use a fork to mix it together and then brush it on the tops of your buns. This will give your bun a really nice golden brown look on them. May make them a little bit shiny too. I'm not real sure, but we'll see. They smell wonderful. They do. They're not even cooked yet. I have to say, this was a very easy recipe. I think this recipe is easier than the original recipe that you had. Yeah. Some of the older recipes are, take a little bit longer to make. I've noticed that I was looking at my mom's recipe and it takes a while. All right now we're going to pop these into a 350 degree oven for 25 minutes. So these just came out of the oven. I actually um, cooked them for five minutes longer just because mine didn't look done. This is what they should look like when they're done and they should sound a little hollow when you hit them like. So once these cool then we'll make the frosting for them. All right, so now that our buns are cool, we're going to make the frosting for the top. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you want one and a quarter cups of powdered sugar and three to four teaspoons of milk, or in my case, I'm using orange juice. Um, you want this, you don't want it runny, but you don't want it so thick that it won't come out. You kind of want it a medium um, because we're going to pipe on a cross on each one of these. So I'm going to add about three teaspoons of the orange juice first, just to see if I need any more. So I'm going to need that orange juice. It's way too thick. All right, I'm going to need more. So let's, let's see, this is another teaspoon. Just go by teaspoons and try it. I think that's still a little bit too thick for me. Now it's loosening up a little bit. I think that's about good. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm putting mine into a bag, a pastry bag. You can just use a Ziploc bag. I think that's about right. I think so. I think so too. Okay. Let me just pour this into my bag. Need a spatula. Okay. Let's make sure we get all that out of there. Like I said, you don't want it too runny or too thick it in between and you don't want it so runny that it won't dry or too thick that it won't dry okay so then just take your bag and lift it up and we're going to put a little hole in the end we're just going to do a cross on the top Alright, 
so here you go. These are done. Now just let the frosting dry on them and they'll be fantastic. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And remember, you do you.